if you have a beautiful, lovely crypto shirt, you glad you're here filling into your regular old presenter. And I know you're thinking, you look just like him. You sound just like him. You probably saw me getting my groceries at the same superstore and same town at the same time. But I saw you, I am someone completely different that it would be absolutely impossible for you or anyone else to ever, 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 ever know my true identity. So I can say whatever I want. I can say Beanie is a ginger twat and there'll be no comebacks. And as far as you know, okay, I am a ghost. Except I'm not, am I? This flimsy disguise is an apt visual metaphor for just how fragile pseudonymity in crypto really is. From board eggs being docked against their will, to Zerox Sifu's problematic past, to the scarcely believable story of the Bitfinex failed money launderers, and the grand baked bean himself, there's been a stream of stories this last few weeks challenging the notions of anonymity, pseudonymity, and whether any of us have any right to privacy in a digital society. The blockchain might promise decentralization, but it also provides an indelible trail of breadcrumbs. And if you know how to find them, it's not even that hard to follow them. So should we be scared or should we be defiant? And I don't want to dish your intellect. But I do think it's time we reflect That again the Mr. X architects who neglect to get co-checked And collect fortune for projects from subjects Who lack the selective ability to check the predilection To take their own direction Chasing their directions Fall on their knees to respect and afflict their anonymous directors Anonymous versus doxed versus pseudonymous It's been a feature of crypto since the very, very beginning It's the very DNA of Satoshi Part mythology, part necessity If we knew who Satoshi was, would Bitcoin be what it is? And I think that's a fair question to ask Would Banksy hold such a lure? if his identity was widely known. So many great endeavors have been brought low by critics discrediting their creator. But if the creator is unknown, then you're left attacking an idea and that is far harder to bring down. But being anonymous and remaining anonymous in this day and age, well, that's possibly the greatest magic trick of all. And you know what's also a great magic trick? Running a YouTube channel without ads. Oh yeah, that's why we have sponsors. Zerion is mission control for Web3, giving users the ability to trade DeFi tokens, transfer assets across chains, and show off their NFT collections all in one place. Zerion offers a multi-chain experience with asset tracking and trading across seven networks, including Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, and BSC, so you'll never miss an opportunity waiting on gas fees to drop. NFT owners can also see their favorite collectibles and art as widgets on their iPhones or Apple Watches and send them to friends and family in a few clicks. Users can explore every corner of the metaverse with Zerion from their web, desktop, and mobile apps. So head to Zerion.io to connect your wallet and get started today. When you shop for plane tickets, you probably use Kayak, Expedia, or Google to compare ticket prices. So why would you limit yourself to just one exchange when you trade crypto? When you make your trades, you wanna make sure you're getting the best possible price, and that's why you should be using Matcha. Matcha routes your orders across all the various DeFi exchanges on Ethereum, Polygon, BSC, Phantom, and Avalanche, and gives you the best possible prices without taking any commissions. Matcha has smart order routing that splits your order across multiple liquidity sources. It also allows you to make limit orders on chain so you can set and forget your DeFi trades. New to Matcha is an integrated fiat on-ramp so you can purchase crypto directly with your credit or debit card and have that fiat be instantly traded for any token that has liquidity. Head over to matcha.xyz forward slash defiant and connect your wallet to start trading. Step Finance is the front page of Solana. Crypto moves fast with hundreds of applications and new things launching daily. Keeping track of it all is a full-time job. Step brings everything into one easy-to-use dashboard. Step's portfolio management dashboard enables Solana users to visualize, analyze, execute, and aggregate transactions across all Solana contracts at the click of a button. Step is built by DeFi Degenerates for DeFi Degenerates. Get started today by visiting step.finance and connect your wallet today. So let's start off with some definitions. First, anonymous, not identified by name or of unknown name. Now the key thing here is the only name that can be given here is in fact anonymous, meaning the subject in question is indistinguishable from any other subject also given the name anonymous. There is no other value attached to that name. And that's the crucial difference with our next definition, pseudonymous, a fictitious name, especially one used by an author. Here, the name does carry distinguishing value. So, Banksy is a pseudonym. Satoshi is a pseudonym. Puck is also 
a pseudonym. Now, there is value ascribed to those names that distinguishes them from others, even if their real-life identities are, in fact, unknown. And finally, doxing, an abbreviation of a hacker term from the 90s, dropping docs, or obviously documents. It means releasing an individual's private, personally identifying information online. That information is then circulated to the public without the victim's permission. Hello, Hello citizens, citizens of, of the, the world. world. We, we are, are anonymous. anonymous. Anonymous famously released 7,000 law enforcement officers' data from the Missouri Online Training Database back in 2011 as retribution for recent raids. They've also exposed alleged KKK members as well as exposing alleged users of dark net child pornography sites. It's a powerful tool in bringing to light the activities of those who might otherwise get away with despicable acts for the public good. But of course, it can be used frivolously and maliciously. In the case of the Board 8 founders, is there a good reason why it was appropriate to dox them? Well, we'll get to that because it isn't exactly clear cut. I believe the metaverse is the next chapter for the internet. And it's the next chapter for our company too. One of the reasons I started Facebook was that at the time you could use the internet to find almost anything. Information, news, movies, music, shopping, except for the thing that matters most of all, people. We live in an era of big data. There is an overwhelming body of information on all of us floating around unprotected on the internet. And this makes it remarkably easy for just about anybody to be doxxed. You could be fished. Someone could stalk your social media. Government records are always a good source of information. And for most, that would probably be all that's required. But you could be packet sniffed, or if someone really wanted information, there are data brokers out there only too willing to sell you personal information if you can afford it. Crypto, unfortunately, has made the world more visible. It's left breadcrumb trails for internet sleuths to follow, and follow they do, with hacks and rogs often first broken on Twitter. Now, it's ironic that blockchain's transparency and ease of audit has made it far harder to remain private and anonymous there, despite this being one of the big selling points in the early years of the technology. And it's interesting to track how the headlines around Bitcoin's supposed anonymity changed over the years. So much so that it has now become extremely obvious that using Bitcoin anonymously for money laundering is a fundamentally stupid idea. So yes, this spectacle who goes by the name of Heather Morgan, aka Rizzle Khan, aka the Versace Bedouin, aka the Turkish Martha Stewart, aka wait. I mean, what the f is this? Everyone knows you know well, it's proper, but not rad, no shame, that won't stop her. Blindly following rules is for fools. Instead, I work the edge cases with my tools. Awkward as fuck. And she's like a world leader, she better duck. This bitch is Turkish, the pressure of luck. ISIS can't handle with Kurdish. Jane Austen romance, better be taken. She and her husband, Ilya Lichtenstein, and really, you couldn't make that up, could you? Were arrested this week for allegedly conspiring to launder around $3.6 billion worth of crypto. The Department of Justice was quick to point out that they were able to track down the offenders using 21st century investigative techniques. Oh yes. Apparently, the couple employed numerous sophisticated laundering techniques, including using fictitious identities to set up online accounts. Very sophisticated. So you can track the whole sorry business through this statement of facts. It kind of beggars belief how they ever thought maintaining that kind of gonzo online presence while actively laundering stolen funds would ever end up in anything but arrest. So here we are, your Bitcoin address isn't anonymous, it's pseudonymous, which is fine. In this case, the DOJ was able to successfully collect enough evidence to arrest alleged wrongdoers. But the vast majority of pseudonymous actors aren't criminals. That's you and me and everybody else. There is always more to build. There is always a next chapter to the story. If you hang around crypto for long enough, dealing with pseudonymous actors becomes normal pretty fast. It's just the way it is, right? 
that pseudonymity is interesting because it accomplishes a few different things. Obviously, it protects the user, allowing them to share only what they feel like sharing. And many are fearful of there being too much transparency over their holdings in crypto. But there's also a whole world of LARPing going on. A pseudonym is a mask, but it's also a costume. You can be whoever you want, and this is in no way a Web3 thing. It's been going on for decades. We are really all being catfished all the time. But for me, I find pseudonymous actors require less effort on my part to get to know them. There's no need for me to know anything more than what's there in front of me. And to be honest, I suspect I'd be disappointed or put off by them in real life. Pseudonymously, none of that really matters. All that matters is the interaction. And crucially, in pseudonymity, we can all pretend we're much more alike than we really are. There's a comfort in that, a comradeship. For developers, though, there's a major challenge here. Decentralized protocols are meant to be owned by nobody. But most of us interacting with them will look for some kind of leader or major governing entity or a lead dev. And it's fine when tokens are up only, but if they go the other way, then the pitchforks come out and those devs are the first in line to be kebabbed. Now it's interesting thinking back to the ICO boom times when influencers like Ian Bellina would wax lyrical about the quality of a team. But then during DeFi summer, it wasn't unheard of for teams to list being anonymous as an actual selling point. And now it's common to see about pages that look like this. So for this film, I reached out to a bunch of anonymous developers. Not a single one wanted to comment on record. Not a single one. The 0x Sifu situation really has them spooked. This post on the Cardano boards of all places raised a good point though. It's not just about undue accountability, it's that the problem of money is inherently baked into the problem facing devs. If you breach a server in a real world startup app, then you will probably not be able to steal millions. The payment processing systems are fairly well segmented and have been around long enough to build the protections in. Plus there's an entire sub industry in banking payments to counter fraud. But in crypto though, you have much more opportunities. You could get a wallet private key on that server hack or you can find an exploit in a contract. That's a big worry. Zero X Sifu was docked as a co-founder of Quadriga by Zach XBT. This generated a massive amount of heat for everyone connected, most of all Danny Sestagali. Everyone, yes, felt deeply, deeply catfished. But would they have preferred not to know? Ignorance is bliss, right? Note the language in Zach's tweet. This needs to be shared. But why? Do crypto citizens need to know everything about who they're dealing with? Because if they do, should we all be voluntarily doxing ourselves because everything needs to be shared? Otherwise, how can we all sleep at night? In this instance, there is a case to be made, but again, I don't think it's clear cut. Nonetheless, it happened. Zach is one of a growing army of self-styled internet detectives such as Dan Olson or CoffeeZilla who are building a loyal following for calling out scammers and wrongdoers. Ironically, Zach was also doxxed in Retribution, which probably comes as no surprise. The author of the Bored Apes piece was threatened to be doxxed and NFT Ethics, the Twitter account that released a mountain of material alleging wrongdoing by one Charles Mosco, aka Beanie, has now been suspended by Twitter. Beanie himself remains bullish on his own innocence and claims to have received threats. So one thing we should take note of here is that these internet detectives are not journalists. The press has a long-standing and important role in reporting information it believes to be in the public interest. And that information will generally be subject to scrutiny before a piece is published. The New York Times published the names of undercover CIA agents in April 2015 regarding their role in drone strikes, which prompted a massive backlash from the government and former CIA agents themselves. But that was a big story about overseas military operations. How can we apply the same thinking to an NFT project? Fado que eu inventei a falar. 
So February 4th, BuzzFeed news reporter Katie Notopoulos published this article exposing the identities of Gordon Goner and Gargamel. The response from the CT side was immediate and scathing. <laughs> So BuzzFeed News had tracked down Greg Solano and Wiley Aronau using nothing more than publicly available records. And as stated in the article, Yuga Labs CEO Nicole Muniz confirmed the identities when pressed. So is this even really a dox? Normally you think of docs as private information made public, but this was public information, so I'm not sure it even really counts. So I asked Katie for a comment, but she declined, stating she had nothing to add to what was written already in the article. But some others did add their voices. Jeff Bercovici of the Los Angeles Times had this to say. A few thoughts on Bake and BuzzFeed, the backlash and the surprising, but it betrays deep ignorance about the function of journalism. I'm an entitled belief that crypto must be covered on its own terms. The job of journalists is to bring information about powerful entities and public figures into public view. That's it. Are Bake's founders powerful? Yes. Wealth is power. That's why Forbes and Bloomberg published lists of ultra-wealthy individuals and families. The people on those lists would often rather keep their wealth a secret. Where's the outcry when they are named? While Robert Reed, in a lengthy thread, landed on an interesting point, citing Wiley Arenell's apparent wealthy family. Do you know what? I think the story of the crypto community is mad. It doesn't does a very for vendetta. It could be anyone farting the power of ethos. If you learn by it comes to money and connections too, it ruins the fantasy that they could be nobodies just like you. So if you remember that thought that pseudonymity removes the differences between us, that we can be much more alike than we really are, if we know who the other person is, then that goes away. We, we are defined by our differences. So what about us then? What about the Defiant? Where do we stand on doxing? The Defiant's position on doxing is, unfortunately, I don't think it can be a clear-cut one. It really depends on each case. There is a case to be made for doxing when that person is doing or even has done something that is fraudulent or illegal and users are at a potential risk. Or in a case that as a news organization, we decide that there is a public good to be made by revealing a person's identity. The bar should be pretty high because we are very sympathetic to the right to remain anonymous or pseudonymous. From their kind of muted reactions, it seems clear that the BAYC founders expected this to happen sooner rather than later. And it's interesting that while others around them were publicly outraged, they themselves were not. And maybe it's because there's this rumor about A16Z and a $5 billion valuation. Could well be. Now, there is a bigger question here surrounding the matter of what constitutes the public interest and what even is the public? Probably the best stance to take is that if you are pseudonymous, and amass any kind of power or reputation through the course of that, then someone somewhere is going to be working to find out who you are. It's far more likely that they'll succeed than not, so plan accordingly. And on that disturbingly dystopian note, it's time to say goodbye. This, yeah, was The Defiant. Crypto first. Do you want Patrick here for the for your regular old presenter? Filling in for your regular old presenter. Filling in for your regular old presenter. So, so.